All right, so it's good to see everybody here in Belfast. Wow, this is an amazing crowd. Um, excited to be here and also um, a little nervous, admittedly. Um, and the reason why I'm a little nervous is because I've been telling the same talk for a couple years now on DevSecOps, and I decided to do something a little bit um, different and tell you a new story. So this is actually crafted specifically to share some new stuff and get your feedback. So be kind. <laughs> um, all right, so the gift of feedback. Um, a couple years ago, I realized that as we were working on DevSecOps, that one of the biggest things that was a, a needle mover for us was getting feedback. And now I just crave it. So if I suck today, put those red cards in there and let me know. But even do me one better and stop me in the hallway and tell me what I can improve. Because I really do believe that that's the future of what we're all trying to accomplish, is making each other better. So I'm going to kind of walk you through today. Um, a little bit about me, for those who don't know me yet, because you probably meet me because I'm going to try and meet every person here. Um, I have been doing this for almost 30 years now. Um, and what I be, mean by this is a variety of development, security, operations, you name it, because, well, um, I started around 30 years ago, and at that time, there weren't a lot of women in this uh, industry. In fact, there was almost none. I was one in 100 people in my computer class and um, had such a hard time trying to make it in this industry. So I've taken on every job. I also found out only a few years ago I was human, and so um, I have robot DNA. And uh, when I met Mark Miller, who's sitting here in the front row, um, who is an amazing gentleman, he helped me to figure out what it meant to be human by explaining to me that it's really important to get out and tell your story and help people along and share, because that's really what's going to move us to the next level. Um, I have started things like DevSecOps. I'm the primary founder for it. And also Hacker Girl is my uh, next generation idea. So bringing women into this industry is a big deal. I see a whole bunch in the audience, and that's awesome. Went to the um, AppSec EU women's uh, conference this week, and it was really awesome. We also went out and talked to schools this week. That was also pretty awesome. You guys are an amazing. Um, industry here. OWASP, you guys really impressed me. I've never met any better professionals than the folks that work in this community. So I'm going to start out with a really boring slide on purpose. Um, by the way, you can smile. It's OK. Um, life is great. And what do I mean by life is great? This is basically a control diagram. It shows you that you have positive and negative feedback because there's really only two types of feedback. I sort of think that's kind of crap, um, because there's all kinds of feedback out there. In fact, you can have some type of subjective feedback, opinionated feedback, um, and there's all kinds of feedback. So, but if life is great, then technically I'm done with my talk. Unfortunately, life really isn't all that great. These are the types of things that are happening for us. I just said life isn't great, but we have DevOps. We have public cloud, we have IoT, and everyone in the room is here to secure all these things. Your workload just went up a lot. There's about 1,500% more increase in DevOps. There's a variety of speed issues that are going on. I hear every day that I need to have speed as a habit. I need to have scale as a habit. How do you scale security when you're basically a friction? when you're providing negative feedback all the time to a system that's invented to produce value. You are a negative feedback, basically, in the system. And I know that when I started doing AppSec a long time ago, I would sit in front of a developer. They'd be building something, and they'd try and understand how to get it right. And then we'd hack the hell out of it. And they'd say, well, what the? Why is that happening? I don't understand. And then eventually, they'd stop inviting us. And after a while, they'd start hiding things. And that went on for many years in my career. And now, um, I would say that a lot of people want us to be in the room, and it's primarily because we've figured out how to change. We've thought about what it means to provide feedback. And so I look at this as a lot of opportunity, just like a developer does. 
not just because I really enjoy all of my connected devices, not because there's all these things that we could be doing um, with our technology to solve human problems, but because it creates an environment for innovation, things that my children will eventually be able to use. This is where it kind of gets interesting. This was my feedback only a few years ago. We started DevSecOps, DevOps, security, that was kind of the answer. Um, the feedback was basically that we're there to clean up the rainbow poop from DevOps. Awesome, right? I became a janitor overnight. Um, I heard from many people out there that we were all going to have to change our jobs, that really security was going to be dealt with in all the platforms that were out there. The cloud was going to be magically secure, right? Um, I know that that's actually not true because I've been working on the cloud now for several years. I'm um, a big uh, advocate for doing a lot of cloud research, giving cloud providers lots of feedback. And as you can imagine, I really enjoy this slide, and at the same time, I really hate it. I see a lot of people laughing about it. I'm not exactly the one who's going to laugh about it, and the reason I'm not going to laugh about it is what this actually provides to me is an opportunity, an opportunity to change how this comes about. So I told you that there's two types of feedback, positive and negative feedback. What's interesting is we always portray negative feedback as bad, as wrong, as blameworthy, as something that we have to be able to avoid. So everyone in the room, I have always walked into a room, and I've even heard the Darth Vader um, Death March song. And um, I felt at one point it was very, very negative for me to walk into the room and feel that my contribution towards making something safer was being depicted as a bad thing. I was already being blamed before I even got into telling somebody what they needed to do to make their workload safe. It's kind of hard, right? Now, I will tell you, it was a little bit disturbing to try and find a Luke picture that actually didn't have the big hands and big feet. Um, so just so that you, if you're disturbed, I'm, I was also disturbed, but I honestly couldn't find one. Um, now, negative and positive feedback is really interesting. When you start to think about the system that we're all working in, AppSec is such a big part of this. Everything that you do every day, what hackers are trying to take advantage of, all of the information that's in your heads, that's getting produced on your website, that's becoming part of our ecosystem of development, security, and operations. All those contributions, they're magical, but they are portrayed as negative. And in this case, the question in my mind is always, which one is actually the negative part of this feedback loop? Is Luke the good guy? Is Darth the good guy? And so, you know, when you start to think about positive and negative feedback loops, the one thing I will tell you is, when you're in the middle of trying to develop software, anything that creates friction is considered negative. So we are basically the negative friction that goes into producing software. I also know that for all those people who want to go out and watch Fifty Shades of Grey now because they don't necessarily know what this is, um, for the women in the room, I did this for you. Uh, basically, Fifty Shades of Grey is where feedback becomes more than just positive and negative. It's not zeros and ones anymore. It's not black and white. There are a variety of uh, pieces of feedback that you have to give somebody to help them to understand what you need them to change. Because feedback is really about changing. And when you start to think about it, that also produces this notion, if you, anybody's really done any work with um, HR or helping people along, you'd know that you've got basically this whole thing about gifts. I'm going to give you positive gifts, and I'm going to give you negative gifts. Well, what comes with that is that complexity starts to get wrapped up into this bundle. And the feedback itself, and I'm talking about your everyday work, is getting wrapped up put in a pretty, pretty gift box with a bow and hand it out to people so that they can understand, appreciate it, and digest it. In other words, everything that you do every day, all the stuff you write down that's wrong with software, is actually having to be wrapped up, which also creates confusion. Have you ever walked into the room with a developer and they've said to you, you know what, 
I absolutely do not understand anything that you've said to me because you gave me all this stuff. It's so super long. I've got a huge spreadsheet. It's a thousand lines long. My software is going out the door tomorrow. Could you just tell me the three things I have to fix? And could you actually fix them for me too? And what's interesting about that endeavor is that developers are now wanting to fix the security problems in their software. But because we haven't found a way to make it digestible for them, one, we don't really speak their language yet. Two, we really haven't figured out the value stream for them. And three, when it comes down to providing it back to them, it's really hard for them to understand why all this negativity. Hackers don't exist, right? We're in the hacker room today. I thought that was really awesome because I love the fact that I'm here. I'm a red teamer. I consider myself part of the hacker main, uh, mainstream. And I really love the fact that I beat up software all day long every day with my team. I also know that the main objective for doing that is to avoid confusion. We used to talk about what was wrong with software in my team, and now we just show you. So if you can imagine, when we started doing that, we just basically would break into your software, we'd write out what we did, and we used to provide the, we're really cool at the top, because we broke into your software, and here's how bad we broke it. And that kind of felt good, because you spent all this time producing all these defects, and then we realized that the developer really doesn't care how cool we are. In fact, they don't quite think we're all that cool at all. They're like, you know what, can I get the one or two lines that I need to do my job, which is why you actually did this thing, I think, in the first place? And so we took the remediation guidance that used to be at the very bottom, where it wasn't cool, and we moved it to the very top of our remediation guidance. And we stopped seeing all the friction with our developers because all of a sudden they had what they needed to get their job done. And the value we were providing was something that was obvious. It was at the top of their ticket in their backlog. The feedback loop made it. Now, we did everything we had to do to get into their backlog, so if you can imagine, that meant Where's your backlog? I need to know where your backlog is. Where's your code? It's in this repo. OK, how does that work? Can you imagine all the friction that it took just to get the defect that we had on their software all the way to them? Amazing. Lots of confusion. So let's explore this for a minute. I have an example here. So if I told you that security has gotten feedback, which is totally positive, we've put in things like HTTPS. Awesome, right? Everybody in the world uses it, mostly. Right? Kind of? Your workforce has security. You've got a physical guard force, and they're considered loved, because you don't want to go to a campus that doesn't have a guard force, because God forbid something happens, you're there alone. I like to know that there's somebody waiting there for me in the morning who's going to say hi to me as I go to get my coffee, and they definitely do, which is kind of amazing to me. Um, but what I love about it is that I know there's somebody there who's going to protect my interest. Positive feedback again. And then I have to tell you that being an American, I was thrilled when we got chip cards. And I was so excited. And then I was a little disappointed too. But we got chip cards. Okay? So sounding all positive, right? Does this sound like your everyday? Doesn't sound like mine. So I'm going to tell you, if you had that experience, would you walk out and want to make any changes? Probably not. But you might want to do more good stuff because it feels good, right? Accolades. I do awesome stuff. So let's try it a little bit different. What if we do the poop sandwich? It's a little bit of bun, a little bit of crap, and a little bit of bun, right? You've heard it before. Um, what's interesting about this is you've built HTTPS. Awesome. You're a total blocker. Could you get out of my way? I really love the chip cards. How's that one feeling? You might have some opportunities, right? Did you hear it? Did you hear it as much as you heard the positive feedback? Because I can tell you that when I started hearing this, I hated it. And where I work, 
This is the common approach. It's the positive wrapped around the negative so that you'll hear it. And it's an interesting device, but quite often the thing that's actually lost is the ability to change based on the negative feedback because it kind of gets lost in that envelope. Now let's try on a different one. What if everything was negative? What if you just suck at building good security, because I can go around it, man in the middle, all kinds of things, right? That SSL you built, whatever. You're a total blocker, get out of my way. You know what? You guys totally suck because Anonymous was able to get us. There's hackers out there, you know. And oh, by the way, everything you tell me doesn't really help me because my workload is still getting decimated. Did you hear anything good there? Did you feel good about it? Because I can tell you that my everyday sounds more like that. My everyday sounds like, wow, what value do you provide here? And it's an interesting dynamic. So let's try another one. What if we are really good at providing HTTPS? We've got security in our workforce. We've got chip cards. We haven't quite gotten things right. We have lots of opportunities. You can work around some of these things. It's not good. You're kind of a blocker. I need you to get out of my way today. And we have a lot of hackers to work on, and we need to work together on these things. Do you want to help? Do you want to make things better? Does it sound like a better approach? I bring this up because there's a lot of security professionals in the room. There's a lot of developers in the room. I could have spun this any variety of ways. And I did work on security here. I could have done it on DevSecOps. I could have had the poop picture built in here, because I can tell you there's a variety of positive and negative in every direction. What I've learned is, and what my team has learned, is that sciencing the heck out of things is super important. Getting to the point where you can hear these things and not have them be emotional is absolutely critical to how we're going to appeal to somebody making safer software. And why is that important to me? Well, it's important to me because in the first couple years of my daughter's life, she had her PII stolen. Not once, multiple times. In the first six months of her life, she had her PII stolen. She's actually got credit monitoring at the age of two. Wow, right? Wow. And not this kind of wow. Now, I will tell you, I was up really late, and I totally think these guys are amazing. And the wow I just gave you was a wow. That's not good. And this is a wow. This is positive feedback, right? We kind of like these guys. I don't know, anybody know these guys? Anybody? They're super cool. I could not even try dancing like them, but amazing. So I like to take things away from every location I go to. And positive and negative feedback is all about having those wow moments. The wow that's down, the wow that's up. We're all professionals here. We all have something to contribute. It's the way we contribute it. When you go break into somebody's software and you tell them they're stupid, they're not going to listen. They're not going to care about fixing it. They're not going to have an appreciation for how you're so cool. They're not going to have an appreciation for why you're an amazing hacker, pen tester, or red teamer. They're not going to have an appreciation for the 93 projects that OWASP provides. That's kind of bad, right? So let's do some science. Um, sciencing the heck out of things has always been my interest. Uh, when you start to think about what we're trying to accomplish here, I brought up the OWASP top 10 for 2017, the changes. So I have to say that being aware about things is really important. I, I kind of don't get it, and I really do need some help on some of the changes this year. And as you might well know, there's plenty of controversy this year on this. And you have an, an ability to affect how it comes out by providing feedback. Positive feedback and negative feedback, folks. These are yours as much as they're the things that get written for you to go out and, and distribute. And it's important to provide that feedback because you're the ones that actually have to use these things to help the people out that are trying to make safer software sooner. I find these to be incredibly useful. When they first came out, for me, 
this was an awesome list. I will say over the years, I kind of have lost the plot. And I really want the things that I know are super important. Right? We know that validation is still a problem. Misconfiguration, totally a problem. There's several on here I just don't get. I don't understand it. And I'd love to understand it, but it takes a lot of time to get there. And when you don't have crisp, clear guidance with lots of feedback associated with it that you can distribute that has both positive and negative elements, you lose the people that you're trying to get on board. You lose your audience. You lose your customer. Skill level. Another thing about feedback is you really have to understand somebody's skill level. Their skill level is critical towards them understanding your feedback. Timing. Timing is everything. They always say timing is everything, right? If you start giving really bad feedback at the very beginning of a project and you do it well, People usually want to get better over time, so they take that in and they understand. But this sounds like not DevOps, right? It's a very linear, sequential process. Crawl, walk, run is something that you can actually do in iteration. It's kind of interesting. And what I would tell you is that timing is everything. Delivery. Delivery is super important. How you actually do something, where you put it. No spreadsheets, right? We want to go from spreadsheets to their backlog, fight to get to the backlog. Those things are critical because if you're developing software every night at 2 AM, the last thing you want to do is talk to somebody at 2 AM. You want to talk to them through the things that you're, they're providing to you, the automation, the zap proxy. All of those things that are happening that you can produce via automation can get into the backlog. Stress. Another key reason why people don't understand the feedback coming to them. They might be stressed out. And having an appreciation for that is really critical. Confidence. Number one on my list. I have talked to a lot of people who don't believe they can get it right. You know why? Because it's really hard. We all know it's really hard to get these things right. It's really easy to make a mistake. It's really easy to go adapt and pull in a component and try to get your functionality right. I, I actually ran a test with my developers on my team. I run a DevSecOps team. They develop software. And I said, you know what? In your first week of working for me, if you come in with the security mindset, I want you to go build something in the first week you're here. That's right. I want you to have development skills. I want you to go be able to build a video demo. You've got to deploy it to the cloud. It's got to be perfect. Go. At the end of that week, they go through this process of complete metamorphosis. Empathy is understood because they drop all the firewall rules. They borrow every component they possibly can. Their video demo is awesome, but they explain in there how they couldn't achieve things because there was so much friction. No one wanted to help. Everyone wanted to get in their way. And that's an interesting dilemma for somebody who's a security professional to go through. So I'll tell you that confidence is a big inhibitor to not only being able to have safer software sooner, but to have the ability to produce it in a way that is meaningful. So let's apply it. Let's try something. Let's do another experiment, application security. This came out of SANS. For those who haven't seen it yet, I thought it was really interesting. Um, what I thought was really interesting about it was application security was towards the bottom. You know what I find every day as a pen tester, red teamer, hacker type? It's not at the bottom. It shouldn't be at the bottom. In fact, it should be at the top. It's one of the easiest things to go out and run a scanner against a workload and find something that's super interesting that allows you to do bad stuff. And it's at the bottom. So why? Does anybody know why? Damn. We keep losing, right? Banging our head here, right? Everybody's probably seen this slide from me because I'm always banging my head. I even have a metal one of these in my office, which, by the way, every day I at least slam my head into it once a day um, to try and remind myself that it is really important to get these things right. So let me ask you a question. This comes from the OWASP website. Is it developer friendly? 
I went there to try and figure out how to get started with a developer mindset. Remember, I've got 30 years, right? I probably know how to do a few of these things. I really could not figure out how to get started. If I'm a developer, I walk up, I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna go to the OWASP site, which by the way says web application security. I found a whole bunch of stuff. What are attacks? Why would I want your code snippets? How do you appeal to me? But the other question I kind of had in this is, how do you get this feedback? Because it hasn't changed in as long as I can remember. And every developer I've talked to about going to the OWASP site has given me this feedback. How do I start? And I'm like, well, there's 93 active projects. You can find something, I'm sure, right? Or there's a huge glossary. Don't you want to adopt this stuff? Do you guys know how big your site is? Have you crawled it in a while? It's huge, massive. And their day job is producing value. And we wonder why we struggle with application security and why it's at the bottom of the list. It's hard. And guess what? This is the full employment act for everybody in the room. This feedback is super simple. We need to make it so that they can use it. We have amazing people and talent in this room producing awesome projects, spending a ton of time trying to make a difference in this world, and our number one customer can't figure out how to use it. That means we lose against adversaries, and it's a pity. So how does a developer gain awareness? Well, we chose to just hack their stuff every day and send them a bunch of tickets. But the OWASP site could easily make it so they're more aware. The top 10 is good, but I'm starting to lose the plot, right? And oh, by the way, if I could achieve this in my day job while I'm producing value, because I'm getting little micro skills as I go, because as I make the mistake, I actually get real inline feedback. I either did it positive or negative. That would be amazing, right? So if you kind of look down these things, do you feel like you could get that out of the stuff that we produce as a community? Because I can tell you, that's what has to change. And people ask me all the time, why didn't you just join OWASP? Why did you have to start DevSecOps? What the heck's wrong with you? Well, this made it easier. This is theirs. We started with their pipeline. We asked them, what did they need? We started to say, all right, it's really hard for us to take security tools, which are all mostly runtime, and do stuff earlier in the process and help you with your decisions. So we're going to kind of start over on the monitoring side, and we're going to work our way up back, and we're going to try and help you build trust and safety into your workloads. And by the way, we're going to find a way to make it easy for you to understand security. We're going to give you grades. Now, grades doesn't transcend the whole world. I've actually found that out through all of my foibles. And I will tell you, I am totally, I'm fearless and at the same time quite wrong all the time, but willing to take in the feedback and make changes, right? And the reason why I bring this up is that when you put down something, features are positive. They put security into their workload. They should get positive points. They didn't do it quite right. They should get negative points. Positive and negative together change the world. Simplifying really has its benefits. One of the really incredible things that we found was there's a whole bunch of stuff out there. I put a bunch of MITRE stuff up in front of an OWASP crowd. Kind of fun, right? By the way, the reason I did that is because we found out something kind of interesting. If we took what we knew as security professionals, which was basically the kill chain, because we were both SecOps and DevSec, which is how you got DevSec plus SecOps as DevSecOps. Um, the kill chain was easy. They're like, you killed my software. You exploited me. And then you took it out on my software too. You like decimated it left of hack and then took it, all of your frustration out it, on it right of hack. You've literally broken into everything that I have, right? They understood that. It was like universal language. And what was interesting about having universal language was there's all kinds of things out there that we can actually just map on, and why does anybody have to have 
it's this way or that way, why can't it just be universally part of the feedback loop that we provide back to them, right? And if we unify all of our efforts against something that's super easy to understand, they didn't get their software right, and oh, by the way, it allowed all these other things to happen, or somewhere in the middle, um, they could actually prevent things from happening. And so when you did this, um, we started to see developers really easily understand that they should fix the things that were causing exploits on their software. And it took them a few minutes to do that, as opposed to the three years when I first get to these companies. <laughs> um, and it's amazing to me to see the change. And then what I noticed is that you could eventually predict. Who in this room would love to predict where a hacker's gonna go? Yeah, right? So um, I took a bet with an executive and said, what if I can predict what they're gonna go after? And he's like, I'll take that bet. <laughs> okay. 40% of the stuff that we produce in my team, 40% right now, have attacker interest. Holy cow. Attacker interest. That means they're doing the same things we're doing. We're getting ahead of them. We're finding it before they are. When something comes up, we're like, you know what? Go bust that box. Let's see what we got. And we use the OS top 10, but from like 10 years ago, because that's the ones that really made sense to me. And we do it at the speed of code. We don't like wait for that person to be up at 2 a.m. and we have to fuel a whole bunch of people that are going to be there with them. We do it by hunting the heck out of them, learning off of their software, producing a pipeline. They have a funnel for customers. We have a funnel for their code. We have a funnel to be able to look at adversary information and actually produce something that goes into their backlog. And if we're good at being red teamers, they can't stop us from putting it in their backlog because that's how it started. We just started putting things in their backlog. And then they said, whoa. That's our backlog, and we're like, yeah, we know. This is your work. You need to get this. And by the way, now, we don't fight that much about security being owned by development teams. In fact, they invite us in to talk to us about what we know about adversaries now. And we spend most of our time doing the work of taking that information in and producing value, which has led to Open Gradebook. One of the things that we're working on is to try and figure out how to align and make it super simple. You get a grade, you get a number, we beat the heck out of your code, we take advantage of everything we know about what you do, just like an adversary does, and we use this to predict the next problem. Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be a great place for 93 projects to find a place for a customer? Wouldn't it be great for something to get started an easy way? Wouldn't it be great to assemble around something that made it easy for a developer to consume that information that you produce? And so we did this, and we are doing this, and we will continue to do this because what we've found is that if we can unify research across many different companies, we can get ahead of adversaries because, by the way, they do this. They align around the kill chain. They sell their wares around the kill chain. They share more than we do. If there's one thing I can leave you with today, all I'll ever tell you is if you inspire somebody to give you feedback, you've won. What you do with it is important, but if you can inspire them to at least give you the feedback, that's critical. And the reason I say that is because this talk was inspired by a gentleman when I was at a MISTI conference just recently. He walked up to me afterwards and he said, there are very few women in this industry and there is no reason for you to feel like you need to reference somebody in your talk that's going to make you feel like you're allowed to be here. He walked up and he said those words to me and the way he started was really graceful. He said, would you mind if I gave you some feedback? And I said, bring it on. He made me better. And I would love to see everybody in the room get the gift of feedback, because it will make you better. And if you have anything for me today, stop me in the hallway, 
give it to me, if there was something I could have done better, if there was something I could have given to you that would have made this easier, I'm all ears because you will make me better enough for me to help produce the thing that I'm looking for, which is safer software sooner. Three simple rules of giving feedback. So if you do stop me, avoid emotion. You might be angry with me. I did take, out, take it out a little bit on your OWASP stuff. I'm sorry. Kind of needed to be said. Ripping the band-aid off. Seek to understand. Have a moment of clarity about why it's important. And then apply some science, right? So if I'm going to get feedback, I'm absolutely going to science the hell out of it. I'm going to find out what I need to do better. I'm going to look at all of the research that's out there. It took a lot of time to produce this deck, believe it or not. And the reason why is because I wanted to be able to tell you the stories. I wanted to be able to have you understand what it felt like to get good feedback. Because you will change how people produce software so that my child doesn't have to continue to get her PII stolen. So that the things that we all produce, the IoT devices, the banking services, the um, medical services, they all become safer. And the reason they will is because you simply have applied great feedback mechanisms. So bring on the gifts, please. I would tell you that the one thing that you can do is ask for people to bring on the gifts. Up, upgrade your cat memes, please, because the cat memes, like, they're totally played out. Like, 20 years worth of cat memes, I'm totally done. So, like, bigger cats, more ferocious, right? We're like ferocious, right? We're red teamers. Thank you to our sponsors. You guys are amazing. We could not do this without you. And then last thing, join a community. Pick up any community, doesn't matter which one. OWASP is amazing. I love being here. I'm going to continue to be part of this community. And at the same time, I started DevSecOps because developers are important. Thank you for everybody's time.